Hi, today we're going to talk about some of the inline cutters that are part of Greenlee's cable termination line. First one we're going to talk about is the ES32L. All of our inline tools, in fact all of our cable termination tools, all work off of an 18 volt lithium ion battery system made by Makita. The nice thing about that platform is the batteries from one tool will work in any of our tools across the line. The tools are shipped standard with a 1.5 battery. There is an option if you need increased cutting time to go to a 3 amp hour battery. Once you insert the battery into the tool, you notice the LED light flashes a couple of times. That tells you that the tool is ready to go. You'll also notice that when you squeeze the trigger, there's a white LED work light to help illuminate some of those dark areas that you may find yourself working in. The tool, as you operate it, has a rapid cycle time and an auto retract feature. The head rotates 350 degrees to allow you to get into tight workspaces or more comfortable cutting angles. Now I'll talk about each tool individually. As I said, this is the ES32L. This tool is capable of cutting up to 500 MCM copper and aluminum. This tool is the ES32LF. Similar to just the L model, except this cutter has jaws on it that are designed for cutting fine-stranded cable such as welding cable or ground cable. The other model is the ES20L. This is an ACSR cutter. The reason I take time to demonstrate each of these models is they have specific jobs and you should avoid using one cutter to do all jobs. If you look at these tools side by side, the big difference is in the cutting blades. The ACSR cutter blades are rather blunt. That is because when you're cutting ACSR and you get to the steel center conductor, that steel actually snaps in half rather than slicing through it. On the ES32L and the LF, you'll notice the blades are sharper. Keep in mind these are for copper and aluminum only that allow you to slice through the material and maintain a nice round shape for the cable to slide into your connector easily. Let's do some demonstrations. This is a piece of 300 copper. And before I do any type of cutting, always remember to put your safety glasses on. Operation is as simple as placing the cable between the blades. You'll notice that the blades did not open after I cut through the material. There's two different ways I can continue on to my next cut. I can either hit the manual retract right after I cut through the material or I can continue holding the trigger so that the tool cycles completely and the blades will open automatically. Now let's cut a piece of ACSR. It's as easy as that. Effortless. Maintenance is minimal on these cutters. The only thing we really need to watch for is to inspect the blades and make sure that we don't have any nicks or dents, cuts. The blades are not dulling or chipping. Uh, Every now and then, you know you're all human, and you know the cutter may wind up in the wrong hands, and somebody may try to cut something that it was not intended for. If the damage is minor enough, it is possible to sharpen these blades, either with a file or even maybe with a rotary tool, uh, and clean these edges up a little bit. If the damage is extensive, the best option is to re replace the blades on the cutters. As you can see, the tools are easy to use. If you follow these routine maintenance items, the tool should give you a long life of operation.